open to blocks. A sellout crowd at Bank West Stadium has been thoroughly entertained. Full time. Parramatta 58, Brisbane nil. Mel Meningo, what do you do with a playing group when you've been absolutely <laughs> belted 58 nil and you've got now the next six months to dwell on that? I guess through the week, a bit of a review, just a, some individual conversations around the season, I guess, and that performance they put out tonight. So, okay, they're all good players. Um, so, but yeah, they need someone, they need a couple that can guide them around the football yeah, field. It's, a great, and, it's yeah. a great point you make, Mel, because they, they have got such a, a, a yeah, a rich vein of, of young props and, and outside forwards coming through the game. But they need someone with creativity to be able to use them. And I think at times this year, I think we'd all agree that when Turpin and Seguiaro were at dummy half and provided a spark, and there was some variation around the ruck, it certainly made them play better football. I can't toss up any excuses for that, so... Uh, you know, I wear it on their coach of the club, so I take responsibility, but it's also, you know, my job to fix that, so... And it just seems to get worse. Reports have just emerged that up to eight Broncos players were out at a Sydney pub late on the night before. The Broncos have confirmed this happened. They're going to release a statement late this afternoon. Guys, how does that make you feel? Yeah, the first thought is very, very disappointing. I've only just heard this news now. Um, uh, and secondly, I just, I just don't understand why. I mean, you're going to made the finals, you're going to a stadium that you know is going to be packed for the, the opposition fans, you're in a hostile environment, you actually need to be, if you're a chance of winning that game, you need to be you know, as best prepared as you can. So, you know, regardless of whether there's any drink involved, if you're out till 11 o'clock, you know, in, in a, an establishment like that, not for a game, it doesn't, it doesn't set a good example of how much the, the game means to you, which is yeah, disappointing. Luke, you've been on this story for a while around Brodie Croft. We scale the market and I put together a list. I want you guys to have a look at it. So we've called it Operation Playmaker uh, from Brisbane. There are six names here. Uh, Hoops, you've discussed Brodie Croft before. I've also included a Aiden Caesar. Of course, George Williams is coming to the Raiders next year. Sam Williams could be an option. There's been a stopgap for Canberra in the past. Cody Walker, we know yesterday, uh, was told he may not achieve full market value at the Rabbitohs beyond next year. Perhaps he could go early. So, Hoops, you've looked at that list. Uh, do you still believe Brodie Croft to be the most likely? I do, Ben, based on the fact that clearly he's on the outer to a degree at the Melbourne Storm. Uh, and I just get the feeling that uh, the Storm, to be cap compliant for next season and make sure that everything fits in the correct place, um, are probably looking to just uh, shift a few pieces of the jigsaw puzzle around. They would have to probably chip a little bit of money in for the Broncos to take Brady, but I just think he's a Queensland kid. It makes a lot of sense. And Brody Croft has completed his first training session as a Brisbane Bronco after moving north from Melbourne on a three-year deal. Croft is expected to be the Broncos' saviour at number seven, a jersey they've struggled to fill since the departure of Ben Hunt two seasons ago. The 22-year-old is looking forward to forming a combination with...